Welcome to Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World, with CEO and award-winning author, Yvette Bethel. This podcast is dedicated to supporting leaders with a variety of solutions to build trust, inspire authentic change, and improve morale within your organization. Learn how to grow your people, build your culture, and transform your results. Welcome to Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World. I'm your host, Yvette Bethel, and it's my pleasure to explore with you the effects of feedback on your team and how you can shift to a safer, more empowering communication strategy. Feedback is a curious thing. The intention behind offering it is to bring about positive change, to modify behavior. However, when criticism is offered, even when it's skillfully embedded in a non-judgmental tone, sounding supportive and authentic, persons on the receiving end can still feel attacked or embarrassed. So responses like withdrawal, defensiveness, or anger can result. When criticism is condescending or even bullying, organizations tend to lose good people or cause top performers to hold back. Studies have demonstrated that critical feedback causes persons to go inward, becoming preoccupied about the critical feedback, allowing the emotion associated with that information to lower productivity because it's difficult to focus on anything else. Neuroscience has proven there are two portions of our brains that affect how we process critical feedback, the amygdala and the neocortex. Each of us has two amygdalae and they are located in the vicinity of the emotional brain. Our amygdalae help us perceive and react to threats with fight or flight strategies. There are persons who respond to criticism as though it's a threat, and when this happens, they can shift into survival mode. The neocortex helps us manage our responses to criticism because it helps us understand why we're experiencing the emotions that are surfacing. It helps us rein in excuses or defensiveness and allows us to respond in a way that demonstrates self-regulation. So why is it important to understand the impact of criticism? It's Because we've been taught to offer something called constructive criticism. When criticism is offered according to the constructive criticism formula, it's sandwiched between two positive statements. Or it can backfire because regardless of how the criticism is couched, persons can become preoccupied by anything that resembles judgment. In some workplaces, criticism is a normal part of the conversation. It shows up during sessions that should be dedicated to coaching, or it emerges when errors are made. When criticism is offered, the intent can be to correct a situation or develop an employee, or both. When there's no intention to develop others, oftentimes the criticism is devoid of empathy. When this is the case, it can show up as impatience, disgust, or judgment. People process criticism in different ways. As I already mentioned, some internalize the feedback and blame themselves. Some get angry or fearful and reject responsibility by making excuses or blaming others. Another group seeks to understand why the feedback was offered so they can course correct. It's rare that I encounter persons in the workplace who belong to the fourth group, and when I do, there are some who still experience the initial amygdala response despite their actions. Others do not tie their value or worth to a mistake and the ensuing criticism. They tend to work in environments where mistakes are used as a learning tool, a source of empowerment, not to shame or communicate failure. There are other types of feedback that build trust. One effective alternative strategy is positive reinforcement. This is a strategy where you highlight an employee's strengths by rewarding those strengths in an effort to build and sustain them. 
Rewards can range from bonuses to developmental opportunities. The goals of positive reinforcement are to shape behavior and improve the self-image of your team members. Positive reinforcement has the exact opposite effect of criticism. Positive reinforcement works best when it's done immediately after an employee has done something that should be reinforced. Reinforcement can be in private or it can publicly highlight a behavior for the entire team. Positive reinforcement increases the confidence of employees, helping them to become more engaged. Empirical evidence shows that actively engaged employees are more productive, so shifting from a culture that transforms behavior through constructive criticism to one where positive reinforcement is a dominant value can have profound effects on morale, engagement, and profitability. Coaching is another opportunity to make the shift to higher engagement levels. When leaders use an ineffective coaching model, they tell employees what they should do, and they don't explain why it's important. So these leaders are unable to gain employee buy-in and commitment. Instead, they explain why it's important to the company. Another challenge I encounter with ineffective performance coaching is managers who do not support employees with how to do something. Instead, they provide abstract instructions that lead to ineffectiveness and inefficiencies. Another suboptimal practice occurs when a manager tells an employee how to do something based on their style and their way of seeing the world, not taking the employee's differences of thinking and execution styles into consideration. Solution-focused coaching is based on the understanding that employees already have the resources they need to solve a problem creatively. As a leader, your role in solution-focused coaching is to adopt a tone of curiosity and use questions to tap into the inner resources of your direct reports. Solution-focused coaching keeps the momentum going because the process helps employees buy into what they are being asked to do. The person being coached defines why it's important. The leader coach helps team members to shift into a creative mode by honing their questioning strengths. I once heard a speaker say, a question has an answer built into it. So the more thought-provoking and curious the question, the more thoughtful the answer will be if there's a relationship built on trust and mutual respect. As you consider feedback and its effects, I invite you to give some thought to how you can achieve meaningful changes and how you provide feedback to your team, and also how you can influence how they communicate with each other. Supportive language is integral to creating high performance. Thank you for joining me at Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World. Join me this and every Monday for a new episode. In the meantime, remember to take small steps every day toward mastering feedback. Thanks for listening to Evolve, Mastery for Leading a New World. Visit YvetteBethel.com to learn more about Yvette's leadership programs and to download her free gift, success tips for igniting your career.